Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's do a complete beginner's guide to green hell, shall we? This is a fantastic survival game in the Amazon rainforest that has a lot of unique and punishing elements. The game really gets to be fun when you can take purchase and actually survive, but it's very hard to know how to do that. I died a bunch in the beginning of this game, and what I'd like to do is just start up a brand new game with you, a brand new story mode single player from the very start, so that you can play along or just watch and see if this is the kind of game for you. And what I'm going to do is narrate my thought process in a completely non-spoilery way. I'm not going to tell you the fastest way to get things. I'm not going to spoil all the recipes and the secrets for you. I'm not going to show you exactly where to go on the map or anything like that. Instead, what I'm going to do is just play the game naturally and talk about things contextually as they come up so that you can understand the controls, the UI, some tips and tricks, and some basic survival from things that I learned the hard way and things I learned on stream from people giving me all sorts of great feedback and tips live while I was playing the game that I want to share with you. So I'm going to basically use my own experience and the knowledge of others to kind of create a way for you to get a foothold into the game. Because once you can get just the basics, I think this game really opens up and shows you what it's capable of. But if you're like me, I died a few times just like right at the get-go, getting poisoned or doing something foolish, and it can be overwhelming. So we're going to ease into that stuff by starting a new story mode right here. Now, in terms of difficulty level, you can go for Walk in the Park, Welcome to the Jungle, King of the Jungle, or Green Hell, and these are more difficult progressively with walk in the park being the easiest and green hell being you know hell so i in my let's play of this game am doing welcome to the jungle which is the balanced survival experience recommended for new players or, or for all players so i think this is what we're going to do for the guide if you want something more challenging which you know more power to you go to king of the jungle and if you want something maybe easier then just go for a walk in the park. So if you want to just focus on like just more of the building and exploring portion of the game without too much uh, craziness of getting attacked by hostile tribes or having to manage sanity, then go for this. But this is kind of the recommended play experience. So this is what we're going to do. Day one. Okay. I'm here. Hey, I made it. <laughs> Is everything all right? Yeah, you can come up. Um, you do know you have the walkie-talkie, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I know I have the... Oh, God. Okay, so first of all, in this portion of the game... This is kind of like a tutorial easing you into things. You've got Mia, your girlfriend here, and you've just climbed up the rope. You have supplies, and don't let this part trick you. It tricked me, which is that, like, you think everything is going to, you know, be fine. You've got a lot of stuff. This is just easing you in, but it is not really representative of the gameplay loop at all. It's more for providing you with some story and context and making you appreciate things that they're going to take away from you. Now, I am playing on PC, and I'm using a uh, Xbox controller to play the game. You can, of course, play with mouse and keyboard. That's fine. I like playing with a controller, so that's what I'm using, and all the key bindings you'll see uh, relate to that. But everything you'll understand how to do, it's just going to be slightly different if you use mouse and keyboard now you see how there's a stone in the bottom left of the screen and it gives you the contextual buttons i can push x to take it or i can push y to open up a context menu and i can like uh craft with it or do other things with it but right now what i want to do is push up on the directional pad use the walkie talkie you see he pulls his hand out walkie talkie and i can talk now in the upper right you see it's giving me a quest. It's telling me, check your radio. That's my objective. And in this dialog box that's come up, I'm going to push up uh, X, rather, to say hello to her. You can come up. You can come up. Just go ahead. Mm -hmm. I need to find something in, in my backpack. 
Um, what does that mean? So I'm going to hold up to reply, and then you really just need to push up on the directional pad. And I'm going to say, I bet you want to nap. I bet you want to nap some more. I know you all too well. <laughs> oh, maldición. Can't hide anything from you. I'd love to believe that was true. Very well. You can catch up, yes? The path leads through that canyon. Leads to the canyon. Mm-hmm. I know. All right. So she's going to do her thing. And you can move the camera with the right analog stick and move with the left analog stick if you're using a controller like myself. And they just kind of want you to go around and explore. Now, you can poke around off to the side if you want to, but for this part of the game, I recommend just doing what they say. It's not going to matter too much in the long run so might as well Oop, we can talk to her again push up you could i noticed that in the upper right says new dialogue unlocked and it's telling us our objective is to go to the camp oh uh have you tied down the boat hey. jake um <laughs> i know this might sound stupid under the circumstances um but i am glad we came back here yeah, I feel you. The yeah, place is beautiful. Still. Still. We can't forget what we came here for in the first place, I know. But as soon as we're settled in, I am off to the Jabahuaca village. All right. So... And what if they will not speak to us? Uh... Come on, let's not get ahead of ourselves. You're a phenomenal interpreter. If anyone can communicate with them, it's you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Good thing I have an anthropologist at hand, Dr. Higgins. We're an anthropologist. All right, so we can keep talking to her. You could talk while you move, obviously, as you see, and we found base camp. Okay, I found okay. the tent. I found the tent. Is everything all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, good. It's, it's okay. The camp looks impressive. They put up a tent for us. Looks like everything's ready. Soul Trail always delivers. At first glance, it looks like we have everything we might need. Perfecto. Perfecto. Day two. Well, that's everything. We're officially settled in. You know what that means, don't you? I remember the agreement, but maybe you should... Maybe we should reconsider this. I'm not sure it's the best idea for you to visit them alone. Cariño, you know I have to do this. It's the only way to make them talk. Oh, don't worry. It'll be all right. Better pick up some wood. Let's have a romantic dinner. Okay. Romantic canned beans. <laughs> Use your imagination. All right, so we need to make a small fire. So here's our base camp, and she's in there reading... And there's some supplies, you know, you see some plates and stuff. We've got food. What you can do when you walk around the tent is there's going to be all these notes that are around to provide you with some extra context uh, and story for the game. Read all of this stuff, uh, and then you'll get a chance to read it again later. But it's good just to know what's going on uh, in this region because you're going to want to have a good idea of this as you go. Now, I'm not going to read it to you. You can pause and, and read this yourself. You can also push the Y button to just read the text if the handwriting is difficult to read. And I'm going to just read these things now. You see how we have this huge cork board? And this has this note here about capybaras, tapirs, and armadillos. Once you read all this stuff, uh, it will go on the cork board tomorrow. But I like to just poke around and read it all. This is telling you about the dart frog. Don't touch it. This is a good tip. If you see colorful frogs in the jungle, do not touch them. The deadliest amphibian on the planet. It's harmless to the natives because they do this special ritual. But to you, it's going to kill you. So don't touch them. Uh, here's an audio it's recorder. Common amongst Amazon tribes, but it's still worth writing down in your book. The dart frog, one of the deadliest amphibians on the planet, is completely harmless for the natives thanks to some kind of vaccination. Jabahuaca, like many others, burn their skin and then puncture themselves, administering small doses of frog poison. They keep repeating the process every once in a while to stay fully immune to it. It's barbaric for us, but it's an everyday routine for them. 
So you can hear her read it out loud. There's also this map of, like, you know, the height levels of the jungle, canopy, emergent layer, understory, and undergrowth, and what kind of things are there. Just cluing you into the... Oop, there's a stick. I'll get that. The dangers that await us. So take a look at all of this stuff and then come out. And whenever you can interact with something in the environment, it will highlight and wipe and give you the button that you need to click uh, to interact. So these machetes, I'll, I can just pick these up if I want them. And it says, hold options to open the wheel and select the notebook and select the fire bookmark. Because in the upper right, you see... We need to make a fire to cook these beans. So I'm going to hold options. And really, I have changed this to uh, toggle myself because I don't like holding for a wheel. So I just push it and I select this. And then I go to the notebook and then I push um, options again and I open the notebook. And then you'll see that in the notebook, I have this small fire here. It tells you the small fire takes six small sticks and eight sticks to craft it. Now, what's important about this is some of the recipes in the notebook you can craft from the crafting menu, and some of them you need to actually select. Like, if you want to build, you need to go into your notebook if it's something large. And then when you're on here, you push X to select it, and then you you see there is a kind of white campfire that I can put in the world. If it's white, I can build it. If it's red, I cannot uh, because there's something blocking it. You can hold the left trigger and use the right stick to rotate it around. You can push B to cancel building it, or you can push X to place it. And then now it wants to build another one. And I, of course, don't Honey, need two. I can't seem to find a bag or two. Are you sure you brought everything? Yeah, everything the porters left. Why? Is anything missing? I'm not sure yet. Uh... But it feels that way. Great. Great. There's some stuff that's missing. Tremendous. But we'll get to that later. So it automatically canceled it for me. But I was going to push B to cancel because I don't need to build two. Now you'll see there's a ghosted fire in the environment. And by the way, you see how I'm talking to you. Time is not a factor. It does not pass in this stage of the game. If you're playing the real game, once we get past this... Yes, there's night and day. It's always passing. Um, and our vitals are important, but not right now. So you can take your time to just explore, look around. Now this, when I move close to it, it's going to say, hey, you need to put the ingredients in. And you must do this in a specific order. So you, you can't skip ahead or put other ingredients that you have for the item that you're trying to craft. You must do it in the order that they want. So they need small sticks. Now, what it says right here is small sticks, and I can push X to insert small sticks, and it says I need six and I have zero. So I have zero of the small sticks I need to build this installed, and then the number in parentheses next to that means how many I have in my backpack, and I have one. You saw me pick up one into ten. So I'm going to push X to insert it, and you see it goes on there, and then now it says you've put in one of the six you need, you have zero in your backpack, I need to go get some more. You can also hold Y to deconstruct the fire if you want. Now, it might be worth noting, let's look at the rest of the screen. In the bottom right, it tells you I can aim by pushing in the right analog stick. I can attack or use my machete, uh, which is how we're going to interact with plants and stuff, just by pushing right trigger. I can block by holding left trigger. I can sprint by pushing in L3, and I can jump with the A button. I can also, with the directional pad, cycle through the different weapons that I have in my uh, hot slots on my backpack, and I'll show you that in a moment. So I have two machetes. I'm cycling through them. But then, if I cycle further, I get to my fists, and then I go back to my machete. Now, if I push select to open up the wheel, we looked at the notebook before. I'm going to go back to it really quickly. In the notebook, you'll notice that there are some many tabs on this notebook. Now, I default to this kind of like food and water tab that you can see it's highlighted on the right panel with the banana and the water bottle and i can move between these tabs by the way this is where you find a fire it's a little bizarre but it's like survival and food so anytime you need to get the fire you have to come to this banana and water bottle thing now i can move the tabs with the triggers to change between them and you'll notice that this tab right here is uh got a badge telling me you know it's got information that's new now this won't 
uh, make sense to us until well, we get our watch and can see our macro elements. But it's basically telling us that we need a balanced diet of fats, fruits, m proteins, and water to stay healthy. And then we also have to manage um, our sanity, which is, you know, how well we're doing psychologically in the jungle when we need to survive. And you want to make sure that this is in good shape. There's also uh, this light bulb tab in the notebook shows you your level. Like, so right now I have level zero out of 100 for fists, for example. And doing any of these things, using blades, using axes, using spears, will level up your strength and efficiency with that particular skill. And then um, I don't have anything in this leaf tab. I don't have anything in the crafting tab. There's a lot of stuff that's empty, uh, but we'll get there as we make progress. So this is how you cycle through your different tabs with the triggers. And then if you want to build another fire, you do this and you push X. And we're just going to um, change the page with the left stick. Uh, if there are pages like there are in the macro, uh, in this first aid section. And then you can push Y um, to just clear all the badges if you want to read everything and not like see them uh, indicating what's new. And I'm going to push B to close this up. Now I'm going to actually push select or options again to open up the wheel and I'm going to go to my backpack and I'm going to push options and you'll see that I open up my backpack and at first the default tab of our backpack is just like what's inside the backpack and you can see it over on the left now this is our inventory and you can cycle through the different categories of your inventory and the different sections of your backpack by using right and left on the directional pad so if I go to the right, you can see the back of the backpack. And if I go again, um, actually, I'm clicking to the left. I'm sorry. And now I see the side. And these are the slots, one, two, three, and four, where I have my hot bars for my tools, basically. So that's why, like, one and two, when I cycle through on the main map, are my machetes. And then I have nothing on three and four. And I'm going to go back around. This is the fire building side. I have nothing here. And I have no food stored. So everything in your inventory is kind of like stored into these different sections. And you can find it from here by going to the backpack. Also, you'll see I have a weight icon. I have seven out of 50 weight. As far as I understand it, weight only affects you if you are above that 50. And then you start to slow down. So you want to make sure you are below that so you aren't encumbered and move more slowly in the jungle. I'm going to push B to close this up. Now we need to get sticks. If I just walk around, you'll see that I can interact with things in the environment and maybe find something like sticks lying around. Or it says in the bottom center of the heads up display, small, sticks and small sticks can either be found on the ground or chopped off from a tree. So here's a tree. I've got my machete. I'm just going to hit it. Now, you notice when I use the right trigger to hit this tree, the bark starts to break off. I use this as an indicator that the tool I'm using is actually being successful. So if I keep going, I'm going to chop this down. Now, you don't need to rotate around uh, the tree like you're playing the forest or something like, to chop it down. You can just keep hitting the same spot. And unlike Medieval Dynasty, th they do not hurt you when they fall on you. So you take no damage. Now, this is a long stick. Here's another machete. If I want three, I'll take a third one, of course. And why would you want three? Just talking. Um, because equipment has durability. So, like, this right here, this machete I've been using, you can see if I select it. By the way, if you're using a controller, you can select stuff from your backpack by using the right analog stick like a mouse cursor. And then you can push X to pick this up. You can push Y to open the contextual menu. And the only option here is to drop it. I'm going to push B to cancel that. But you'll notice where it says machete, it has durability 98%. Whereas this other machete is 100% because I haven't used it yet. So more of these is good. Now here's a stick on the ground, which I need. And here's another stick. But this long stick is big. If I pick it up, you can see my character actually has to carry it. And I can't use my machete because I'm like carrying this stick. But if I drop this onto the ground, I can either hit it with my machete like this, bam, and break it into two sm sticks, um, or I can push Y, and I can open up the crafting menu directly with the stick, or I can push harvest, and I'm using the directional pad to move between these choices, and if I push X to harvest this, like, I'm going to turn it into two small sticks and actually a third small stick, and you'll see that I got those. So the, in the right, 
you'll see what you get from harvesting. And I need small sticks, right? So if I go over to the fire, I can... Actually, I only got two small sticks. Never mind, I lied about that. There we go, two. Um, I think it was telling me that this stick was in, in here. So I'm going to just break this apart. And, right, so I got one and then two. I think it just tells you sequentially. I got one and then two, and I have a total of two. And I can put them here. So down here, there's another small stick, and that's the final one that we need. Now we need regular sticks. Here's a stick. Here's another long stick. I'm going to chop it. Oops. Um, I'm going to take this small stick. I'm actually just going to click expand and just click harvest. And you'll see that when I do that, um, I get two sticks. And here's another stick. And here's a small stick. And that should be all that I need for the fire. One, two, um, three, four, five, six. Oops, nope. I need eight sticks. Now I'm going to go into my backpack really fast. I'm going to show you in the backpack icon. In the rope section of the backpack, this is where you put rope and this is where you store all your sticks. You can actually store a bunch of sticks, small sticks, in your pack, which you need for firewood and all kinds of crafting. So you want to carry a lot. And uh, this has already been chopped down. I'll chop down another one. Chop, chop, chop. We got a small leaf pile just accidentally by hitting it, which is fine. We can use that, and it goes into our backpack. Anything that you gather automatically from harvesting will display on the right. Now, this is a log, which is bigger than I want, so I'm going to chop it. And then it makes long sticks. I'm going to chop it. And you're kind of breaking it down the cycle. And then there's a regular stick, and there's another stick, and I'm going to chop it. And we're going to get a stick, a stick, and a stick. And I could mess with the log. I could pick up the log and carry this giant log back to camp and drop it on the ground. But I don't need it right now. I'm just going to put these sticks right here. But I will show you if you go to your backpack. This is where I'm storing my sticks and my small sticks. You can see in rope panel. But if I go into the backpack, I've got these like leaf piles. And I can push Y to expand. I can eat these if I want. I can use them to craft. I can drop them on the ground or I can destroy them. When you destroy something, it just disappears from the game world. It doesn't even go to the ground. And it will ask you to confirm if you want to do that. I like to do that with stuff that I just don't need at all anymore. And I don't want to see it anymore. Now, I'm going to go to the stick and just show you that in my backpack, with these big sticks, I can push Y to expand. And I can actually craft from here. I can pick out of the stack. But I can also harvest this and break it down to smaller sticks from the inventory if I want to. So... You can always just interact with things in your inventory, too. I'm going to just push X, and I'm going to build this up. Well, looks like everything's ready. Mia, can you bring me a lighter? Um, remember when I mentioned we seemed to be lacking some equipment? <sighs> Don't tell me. Yeah, we have no fire. <sighs> Not a single lighter, nor box of matches. Uh we, we ordered both. Did you check everywhere? I did. You need to do it the old-fashioned way. Well, not the best start of the expedition. So, as you can see, the objective in the upper right says we need to craft, uh, check the new craft added to our notebook, which is the hand drill. This is great practice because we're going to need to be able to start fires on our own uh, once we're out of the tutorial. By the way, let me pause the game just to tell you this really fast. Um, actually, I don't need to pause it. Where time doesn't matter right here. I did the tutorial when I first booted this up. You can do the tutorial, but I don't recommend it if you want to play story mode. Because if you do the tutorial and then do story mode, the tutorial is just this part of story mode. So you'll have to do it again. So this is... I've done this now three times, this tutorial. It's fine, but you don't need to do tutorial if you plan on playing. Just dive into story mode, and it does the tutorial for you, okay? Now, uh, we need to go to our backpack, and I'm going to... Nope, not backpack, notebook. And you'll see how we need to create a fire starting tool. Now, at this point, it actually just automatically opens us to the page for the hand drill, which goes in the crafting tool section, which is like the guy holding a stick in his hand on the tab. And this says hand drill. It needs a stick or a plank and a small stick. So this is kind of hard to read sometimes, or it was for me at first. But what this means is you definitely have to have a stick. And then you can either have a plank or a small stick, but you don't need a stick and then a plank and a small stick. So 
uh, we just need a, like, if we just use a stick and a plank, we're good, or a stick and a small stick, and we're good to make the hand drill. So I can select this, but it doesn't do anything if I try to select this from here because I need to go back and I need to push options to open up the crafting menu. And the crafting menu, you can get to, it looks like the hand holding the stick from this wheel. And I just push uh, select again to get here. And it looks like this from your backpack. It has like a rock with a you know piece of cloth on it and it allows you to craft. And then there's a icon in the middle of the screen that shows how many items you're using. Now, for right now, if I just go ahead and I select a stick from my backpack at the rope section, and you could craft from any section. You can move to the different sections to use it. I'm going to push A to craft with it. When I push A, the stick goes over here onto the rock with the cloth, meaning like this is kind of like your workbench, basically. And in the middle of the screen, it's telling you, oh, okay, you used an item. And one pip of this has filled up. And it's telling you that you've used one ingredient and that you can only use three ingredients to make something with this stick, I think is the way to understand these empty circles. Now for us, we're just going to go ahead and use a small stick and I'm going to push A to craft. And then it immediately knows you want to make a hand drill. So the hand drill appears right here. And both of the pips have filled in as white circles and you see how the rest of them are grayed out like there's nothing else we can make from this point we can't add anything onto this recipe to make anything else that we know of right now so this is good and if i push the right button i will craft this but notice how underneath the craft window or the crafting word it says one out of two that means i can actually make two of these now further down below it's telling us that uh there are some other options we have with the buttons that we can press so we can um push the right stick in to craft more than one so if i push right stick i actually am going to craft two but if i push left stick i will go down to only one i only want to make one it also tells you right here how what ingredients are on the pile you have a stick and a small stick and if you want to take something off you can select it and just push b to remove it now um, you need to use the directional pad if you're using the controller to select between these. But I want to actually just make this. So I'm going to push right bumper or right or R1 to craft it up. You'll see he like gets his hands together and he makes it. Need to find something dry. Now we've made the uh, hand drill. And the hand drill goes in the fire tab over here. So over here um, on the fire tab, we have the hand drill. We also got a plank which goes in the fire tab. So we're just going to put that. It stores over here. And you can store a plank. Um, and the hand drill is here when we need to use it. It only has 15% durability, so it's not very strong. They break pretty quickly. But he says we need to find something dry. You cannot start a fire with the hand drill unless you have something dry. And it says in the bottom of the heads-up display, this is where it gives you the context you need for these objectives. We need to find tinder, as it says in the upper right. We need something dry like a bird nest, fiber, or to cut down some dry leaves. So we can get fiber from certain materials. We can also look for bird nests or we can look for dry leaves. So for example, um, these leaves right here are brown on this like little palm man. So if I chop this uh, tree, I got to hit the root, sorry. Eventually, we're going to bust up this whole thing and it, all the leaves are going to fall off. And the green leaves are palm leaves, and these are like fresh palm leaves. But you'll notice how the brown leaf, it's a dry leaf. And if I hold X, I kind of like grind it up, and this is tinder. So I always try to have as much tinder as I can on me. I'm going to just hold X and grab some more. And that's all the dry leaves that I saw. You cannot turn um, a palm leaf into dry leaf, but you can expand to harvest it. And if I harvest it, I get leaf pile, which, you know, we can use for other things. But it's not um, fiber, and it's not dry leaf. You specifically have to find those brown leaves. Or I could walk around and, you know, try to find, like, uh, a bird nest, which there's one right here. And you can hold X to pick up the bird nest. There's also a feather, which I'm going to take. And there's even an egg, which I'll take just because. But... Uh, I like to pick up as much as I can. You don't want to carry so much that you're encumbered, but you need supplies to survive. Now we've got what we need. So 
if I look at the fire, it says we need ember to create the fire. And then these two circles that are to the right and the left, these are the cooking slots for the fire. So if I want to put meat down here or something to roast it, I can put it on... I have two slots to use for that, basically. But right now, I just need to push um, options, go to my backpack, push options again, go to the fire tab of my backpack, select the hand drill. I'm going to push Y to expand the options, and then... I'm going to push X to use it. And then you see he's going to get down on the ground and he's going to like try to use this. Now, once you're using it, this is the first step, but you need to have something dry. You can either um, select this bird nest by using the right analog stick to move to this. The bird nest is stored on the fire making portion of your backpack. Or I can go into the um, kind of like leaf and rock or nut side, which is kind of like your material section, the big pouch of your backpack, and you could select a dry leaf. From the dry leaf or the bird nest, once you've got the hand drill selected, there's a little circle that's kind of right at his hands, which means you can insert something there. And if I just push A, I will insert it, and he will just go ahead and try to make this. It's hard to make a fire, but he did it. And then once you've got the ember, you walk over to the fire and you push X to just drop it in there. And you've made a fire. Mia, the fire is burning. You won't always make a fire. And you need to have enough stamina to endure the entire process to make it. so calm? I am calm. I don't know how to explain it, but strangely, it feels safer here than there. Oh, I don't know. Jaguars, venomous spiders, and snakes. Let's not forget the scorpions. A <laughs> mere ant's bite hurts like hell. I am well aware of that. But still, we have a chance to achieve something. Make a difference. At home, all we could have done was be helpless and wait. I prefer the wilderness. So you could say something to her, and you could say, um, you know, I'll miss you when you go. I'll miss you. And I'll be worried. But I'll do some work in the meantime. <laughs> When we meet, I should be able to catch a fish and start a fire with a single spear strike. You say you'll be afraid, and yet you are in high spirits. That's what I like about you. Nonetheless, I'm a bit worried about you meeting the Yabawaka. Everything will be fine. I need to go alone. We already agreed that's the only way. Besides, they don't seem to like you. They don't Aww. seem to like outsiders. They shot arrows at a military chopper. Hard to blame them. Since you published your book, they've been under siege by the media, scientists, doctors. The World Health Alliance established a medical camp and probably performed research, violating the tribe's taboos. But I will convince them. I have to. She's going to convince them. All right, day three. And we're waking up. Her cot's empty. What's going on? Search the tent is the objective. Notice I have none of my tools. I have nothing equipped. Because I was sleeping. Don't sleep with my machete. What's going on? And I found a note. I'm at the village. Call me with the radio when you wake up. P.S. There's a little gift for you. Love, Mia. So we're going to push up. And we're going to say hello. Hello, Mia. Yes. You left already? You left already? Why didn't you wake me up? You know I hate farewells. Well, I was hoping we'd have breakfast together. You surprised me. That's all. <laughs> Admit it. You thought I forgot your birthday, didn't you? Well, I didn't. So, she's given us a gift underneath the note. And it's a watch. Ah, very nice. And you can talk to her. Exactly what I wanted. It even has solar batteries. Solar bats. And a macro element scanner. Check yourself to see if you're not missing any. We've been here only a few days. But stress can wear you out. It's wearing me out. Tell me about it. Okay, so she wants me to check my watch. So I can hold the right button now, R1, to look at my watch. 
Now, the watch is going to tell you um, the red is proteins, the yellow is carbs, the blue is water, and the green is fats. And you need to have all of these full so that you are having, you know, you're fully satiated, like you're not hungry, and that you have your diet needs met, and that you're not dehydrated either. So you want to keep these up. And it says, search the, set, the tent for something nutritious. So any of these protein bars you can take. Uh, just pick them all up. They're delicious. And the game doesn't tell you this, but what, what it wants you to do is actually eat these things eventually. Uh, which we're going to do in a moment. But I will show you. Remember how I said all the stuff that we found just goes on this cork board? You can come back here and read it. If you forgot to read it yesterday, it's all here. And then there's a new note, which we'll read in a second. There's also uh, another voice recorder. Recording number one. So, I'm on the expedition with my wife, Mia. Hey, Mia. Hey, Mia. Say hello. Oh, she's wife, not girlfriend. Sorry. Hello. The tent is up, so we can start working right away. I'll focus on indexing new plant species, and Mia, can you explain what you're going to do? Uh, well, I'm going to meet the Jabahaka tomorrow. All right, so you don't have to listen to that. Um, if you go outside of its range, obviously you can't hear it, but I have the subtitles turned on so I can read everything anyway. And uh, at this point, I'm going to get my machete. No space. Oh, I've got four. I got my stuff back, apparently. Never mind. Maybe I lied about the whole tools thing. Maybe it just equips you on fists. Anyway, here we are. And there's some new notes over here, which is this uh, vine of the soul, which means you take these two things and you... Uh, you know, you make uh, ayahuasca if you want to have a real good time. And then these are the Skull Painted Warriors, which everything about the Skull Painted Warriors says, um, we love you, basically. Like, they're the friendliest people in the jungle, kind of like the Care Bears. It's great. Uh, so we look forward to meeting them, and they want us to eat. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my backpack. And I'm going to go to backpack, and then you'll notice that Anytime you get something new, it, it sorts automatically into the appropriate section of your backpack. By the way, you can hold down to sort your backpack's contents, which is extremely useful because it gets really messy when it fills up. And then you can go to the new tab, and the chicken or turkey leg drumstick is the food tab, and here's where all my protein bars went. I'm just going to push Y to expand the options, and I'm going to eat one with X. And then now, uh, we're ready to call Mia. Well rested and well fed. Keep it that way. We need that brain of yours working at peak performance. I'll try to take good care of it. Have you found them yet? See, si. and as expected, they don't want to talk. They behave as if I am not here. But they haven't driven you away. That's a good sign. You need to convince them that you're one of them. Mm-hmm, agreed. That seems to be the right course of action. I will sleep on the edge of the village and only eat what I can find. Brave girl. Thanks for the encouragement. Looks like I'm on my own from now on. We can't get in touch so often as long as I remain in the village. Been thinking the same, but didn't want to say it. I really don't want to lose touch. If anything goes wrong, I'll leave the village and get you on the radio. Otherwise, you can assume everything is just fine, and there is no need to worry. <sighs> All right. Let's focus on the goal. I'll be focusing on indexing new plant species. I think I saw a few new specimens around here. All right. So, you got to talk to her using the walkie-talkie, pushing up on the directional pad, choosing your option, pushing X, and then... Um, now we need to go check on the corkboard for the note that we couldn't interact with, which is this piece of paper... Uh, and it says tobacco leaves are great for healing venom bites. Now, at this point in the game, I want to just tell you, it might seem like this is easy peasy, no problem, and it kind of is. It's, it's meant to be that way, but take note of everything you see here. Take note of how do I use my backpack? How do I start a fire? What do I need? 
tobacco plants. Oh, they heal venom bites. Now, your character will note this in the journal, but you should just know this so that you can make your life a little bit easier. Because when you get a vet, like if you get bit by a snake and you're poisoned, you got to act fast. So, um, there's rattlesnakes all over the place. We got to, you know, maybe get some tobacco plants. Uh, that's, and they want us to go find one. They're going to show us what it looks like. So it says go north. Now, how do I know how to go north? You hold right button to open up your watch, and then you can use the directional pad to change its function. So there's a compass built on that has a, um, you know, kind of like a geolocator. You have your position, 2834, and you could use this to, like, keep track of where you are uh, and where your base camp is, stuff like that. And you could actually go again to see what the time is, what the day is, stuff like that. So you could cycle between these options. So we need to go north, which is this way. You just kind of move your camera until your north is pointing forward and this is good so let's go up this way and i'm going to use um l3 to sprint i run through the water and i'm just going to kind of go up here we need to find a tobacco plant uh up to the north and uh we could take this rope so this vine that was hanging down liana that's actually rope your character just will use it as rope it has a fun name you know, like the plant name, but if you take this, this is rope that you will store on your backpack with your sticks, and you can use it for all kinds of crafting. Now, we need to go north, which looks like it's up here, and there's a rope, so let's just go ahead and climb the rope. Just push X to interact with this, and we'll just kind of climb right up here to use the rope. And look for some tobacco. And dee 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 I fell. I, oh my god. Uh, the rope yeah. was cut. I knew I was supposed to not call, but a line snapped and I fell down a good 30 feet. Uh, yeah, the line snapped. Hey, Leo, are, are you okay? Uh, I'm not sure. No. Hold on. I'll walk away a bit so they can't hear you. Let me know once you have checked yourself. Okay. So, the game says inspect your body, and it's telling you to hold the, op uh, the wheel with options and choose the body inspection, which is the magnifying glass. So let's talk a little bit more about the heads-up display or the UI. In the bottom left, now you could see I have a sanity marker, which is that uh, brain icon, the circle. And I'm fully sane, which means it's gray, the circle is filled up. As I go insane, lose sanity, that will deplete. So you want to keep that full. The first aid symbol is your health, um, and it's actually not just your hit points, but it's reflective of, like, um, how your macro elements, this is affects it, and your damage you've sustained on your body. Then in the bottom is um, your tiredness and your stamina. The bottom thick bar with the lightning bolt is your, um, how sleepy you are. If that gets to zero, you will pass out and fall asleep automatically. So go to sleep before that happens. And then the smaller bar above your um, sleepiness is your stamina. So it's like fatigue and stamina. So if I'm running, for example, you see how the small stamina bar like depletes. Now what they want me to do is push um, select or options and then go to the magnifying glass. That's the inspect. And I, put, I use it again. And then when you get to this screen, what happens is you're going to check each part of your body for an injury and you're going to do this a lot so it's important to know how to do this whenever you see in the bottom right or i'm sorry the bottom left of your heads up display where your health and stuff is if you see this flashing magnifying glass icon that means you have to inspect yourself you have something like a leech is on you or you have a scratch or something like that that you need to fix so you can in the center of the heads up display you'll see there is a indicator of his body and it's a circle, and you can see each quadrant of his body he's looking at. So right now we're looking at our left arm. And I can change that by holding left trigger and moving the right stick to look at, like, my right arm. Or just point it to, you know, my leg or whatever. So if I look at my right arm, for example, and then I hold oh, right trigger, that's definitely not good. I can then rotate my arm to be like, ouch, I got a big scratch or a scrape on my arm. So you can rotate this around to see how it is, um, and then... You can check your other self parts out, but I think we're probably okay. Uh, we just kind of hurt our arm right there. Okay, so we're going to go out of this, and we need to call Mia 
push up and to use the walkie-talkie hey, and talk to her? It's, it's all right. Nothing's broken. Just scratches and bruises. Nothing to worry about. In the jungle, every scratch can be dangerous. You need to patch everything up. Do you remember how to do it? Yeah. Um, yes. Okay, I'm going to say yes. Yes, I do. Molinaria. Long, smooth, acute leaf. Surrounded by yellow flowers. That's it. Okay, I'll go look for it. You should have it in your notepad. Which we do. When you've treated your wound. All right, so let's talk about that. that. Over and out. So, you're out in the wilderness, and you need to do everything with what's available. So, if I push options to go to the notebook and select it, you'll notice that now a bandage has appeared underneath the hand drill of things I can craft. And all I need is a leaf from the Molinaria plant. And to know what that looks like, I can go to the tab right below it, the kind of like um, flora tab for the plants. And it shows you a picture of the Molinaria so you know what it looks like. It looks like uh, it has the little yellow flowers, as he mentioned it. And it says effects, like we don't know what happens if we eat it. We know that we could craft it into a basic dressing. And we don't know what happens if we brew it in a with water to make like a tea or a potion or something. So I'm gonna close this up. So that's how you know what it looks like. And this will, game will keep track of all the plants that you know and that you figure out through trial and error. So right here, this is the Molinaria plant. It's got the yellow flowers. It's got these nice big leaves and you have to use the machete and just chop it a few times until it falls apart. And you'll see that you just automatically pick up all the Molinaria leaves and they go into your backpack. And then I'm going to open up my notebook because we got a tab for, uh, let me move over to it, scratch, abrasion. So the different types of injuries, the game will keep track of how to treat it. It can become infected if we don't treat it. And it says you can dress the wound. You can also make a dressing with a disinfecting substance, which we don't have right now. But I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to go to my backpack and I'm going to go over to the ingredients tab. Um, the big pouch, and I'm going to select the Molinaria plant. Uh, and you can see it has the little yellow flowers, but it just tells you Molinaria leaf. I'm going to push Y, and I'm going to say craft. And I went, as soon as I put it over here, immediately the game knows that this is a leaf bandage. It's the only thing I can make with this right now. It just takes one ingredient. And I'm actually going to push right stick twice to make three of these babies. I'm going to push right button, and you make all three of them in one go. So he goes one, two, three. And you can see they're all in my backpack. Now, to use this, okay, I need to move out of this, and I need to go select or options, and then go to the inspection. And you have to actually find the wound and rotate to it. And then you see how um, in the kind of bottom center of the heads-up display, it says you can use left bumper L1 to open up your backpack. And then from your backpack, you can use the right analog stick to select the leaf bandage to put the cursor over the leaf bandage. And then just like before, there's a white circle on the thing that we can interact with. And so we get the in, the insert option. If you're not getting the insert option, it means you don't have what you need to be using um, visible enough. You're not close enough to it. So you need to like rotate that body part or get closer to the fire or whatever. Or it just doesn't insert. But in this case, it does. I'm going to push A. And my character is just going to automatically like wrap this around and make a big bandage all over his whole arm. And now I could talk to her. Here I am. All wrapped up nicely. Mm. Does it hurt? It hurts real bad. Um, no, no, uh, not much. Not much. Good. Hopefully it will heal fast. Yeah, no problem. So, how are you doing? I'll be initiated in a few days. I am optimistic. I expect to be treated as one of their own after that. And... I should be able to ask some questions then. Some elders are opposed to this, though. Luckily, Chief Kuini is on my side. Why are they opposed? I think... I think they were divided even before I joined them. The Chief wanted to approach the World Health Alliance peacefully, but a few of the elders insisted on fighting. Now, the Jabahuaca basically have two factions. Sounds dangerous, Mia. Be careful. I'm not in any danger. Told you, I'm optimistic. Okay, so like what she's saying is very important, which Jake, is that. Please come in. Never mind. Jake, I need you here. 
Things have changed. Answer, dude. Mia? What happened? Mia, speak to me. Mia! She is not responding. What the hell's going on over there? So we need to find her and... It immediately goes to a cutscene. Nothing you can do, this just happens. You're looking for Mia, you find the village. It's not going well. A little water slide action, mud slide. Oh boy. I'm fine. I am I am fine. It happens. I don't see what the big deal is. Oh my god. So now you're kind of through the opening tutorial and the um green has hit the fan, as it were. So we learned some things. We learned that some of the Yabahaka are, I'm not saying that right, but Hello? are not in favor of what David, we're doing. What the hell is going on there? Ow. Huh? Oh, come on, speak to me, Jake. I, I, I'm not doing well. I can't reach this. Okay. And... Some of them were opposed and some of them were for it. We met the ones that were opposed. We hear a plane maybe going overhead. We passed out. We're waking up. Beautiful, sunny day. In the rainforest. On the beach. And. Oh my god. Mia. Mia. Damn it, this radio. It's radio. It's not the radio. It's it's you. Okay, so I'm going to pause the game immediately because I want to tell you something. Uh, we, we got hazed, just a little friendly initiation that we didn't do very well, um, and we nearly died. And here we are. Our wife is in trouble. We are now lost. We don't know where we are. And uh, there's scary natives that are out there and there's also you know just the regular difficulty of surviving in the amazon rainforest which is where we are so at this point the game really begins proper and i'm going to tell you you need to save the game right now save your game now because for, at this point when i first got to this area i died several times real quick so you want to come back here you don't want to you definitely don't want to play that tutorial again and um this is where we're going to stop the first episode because next episode we're going to just open up and talk about everything we need to do and it's going to be like rapid fire because we have to move really quickly to get through a lot of the game's content uh, and at, time is now moving which is why I'm pausing the game to talk to you. So daylight is a wasting. We've got needs uh, you know, with our macros and our micros to take care of. We have to secure shelter. We've got to get a fire. We need to get some tools. We need a lot of things. We need um, to stabilize. And that's what we're going to get into. So this is going to be a series, a guide series, because I have to walk you through the beginning portion of this game to explain everything so that you can actually get a, some traction and a foothold to survive because this game is not nice. This game kills you or messes with you all the time. I get jacked around uh, with food poisoning, actual poison, spraining my ankle, getting hurt, getting lost, getting killed by natives, getting attacked, all sorts of things. And we're going to talk about what to do to best give ourselves a chance to survive in the beginning. And then you can explore the game on your own. So, I hope that you found this first episode to be useful as we just kind of ease into the game, learn the controls, and work through any of the kinks that the opening tutorial kind of has. And now we're going to get into the bigger part of the game. I, uh, if you have any questions about the game, please post those in the comments below. There will be more episodes coming to help you get further. And 
I look forward to doing those. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. If you are a green hell expert and you want to give beginning players advice in the comments, that is fantastic. I really appreciate that, but I would love it if you could bear in mind that we are doing this series for people who have maybe never played the game before. So don't go too far into details. Don't spoil anything. Try to give people advice that's non-spoilery and not overwhelming because there's so much that goes on right at the beginning. And I uh, just really appreciate your attentiveness uh, doing that. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. <laughs>